On this side, I have my grist crushed and ready to go. Over here, I've got my strike water heated up, ready to go. And I've got a pretty good idea of the exact volume and gravity I'm gonna get out of this when I'm done. But I know that can be a tricky thing to calculate for the new distiller. That's what we're looking at today. How's it going chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse and this is still at the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. So hitting your mash numbers, figuring out in advance how much water and how much grain, corn, whatever it is that you're using, you need to hit a specific target, original gravity. That's the topic of this video. And the reason I'm doing this is because we have a whole host of new people to the channel, uh, new to distilling. And this is one of those questions that really perplexes people. Uh, and I think in some ways turns people off making the switch over to all grain. And yeah, there can be a bit of math involved if you want to do it manually, but it's really not that hard. It's something pretty easy to figure out. So we're going to tackle that question today. I got caught up in mashing. I had too much fun and I just, uh, I did it <laughs> without talking to you guys. So here I am, this is future Jesse talking about past Jesse's situation. But what I wanna do is use what I had in that pot, what I was mashing as an example and show you how I would work out what my anticipated original gravity is based on the volume and the, uh, the stuff that I've got in the grist basically. So here's what I wanted to do, I had so I had six kilos of malted corn and five kilos of malted barley. The malted barley was Gladfield's ale malt and the malted corn was Gladfield's malted corn. And I wanted to aim for a 30 liter volume. Now the volume is the end volume. So that is all of the liquid that goes in, less the liquid that gets stuck in the grist, in the mash, plus the water that you use for strike water if you're using strike water. Uh, so essentially the volume that goes over into the fermenter. Before we get stuck into this, we need to find out what the extract potential of both of these different things we're using are. And uh, to do that, the easiest way to do that for any product you're gonna use is to find the spec sheet. And ideally you want the spec sheet for that exact product that they've given you. Because guys, it will fluctuate from batch to batch to batch. Now I don't have it for this corn and this um, ale malt. So what I'm using is Gladfield's minimums, which means the, the grain that I've got is probably very slightly higher than these numbers. But a spec sheet looks like this, uh, and the number that we're looking for is the extract potential, which is the number that's highlighted at the moment. Now Gladfield do this number as a percentage. That percentage shows you uh, the percent compared to what it would be if you're using straight sugar. So it's pretty crazy when you think about it. So this grain is capable of getting 81% towards uh, what sugar would do if you used weight for weight in the same amount of water, so on and so forth. Just a quick note to say team, if you don't have any specs for what you're using, you can get pretty good results by using some base numbers like these. I will make sure that these are in the description down below on this video and also listed with the calculator. So if you don't have exact numbers, roll with these numbers based on whatever it is that uh, is closest to the thing you're using and it'll, it'll probably give you a pretty good result. Now here's the first trap guys. This number can be expressed in a bunch of different ways. I think of it in terms of percentage. That's what I find easiest to think in. So a percentage is either going to be two digits and then a percent sign or <laughs> two digits by themselves. On Gladfield's example, I think from memory, I'm not looking at it right now, but I think from memory, it is uh, just two digits. This might also be expressed as a gravity number. Now, if it's a gravity number, it's gonna be something like uh, 1.036 or 1.369, something like that. Uh, and that is, if it's metric, it is what one kilo of malt will do in one liter of water. So it's gravity points per kilo of malt per liter of water. If it's imperial, if you're in America, it's going to be, um, it's going to be gravity points per pound of malt per gallon of water. So the imperial numbers are gonna be much, much lower. They're gonna be something like, I don't know imperial numbers at all, but they'll be something like uh, 1.039, I would guess, something like that. If the spec sheets that you're looking at are not in percentages, you know, 81, 
or 81%, and they are in fact in gravity points, you can convert them back over to percentages using these formulas here. Don't worry guys, I'll put them in the description down below. Now the only reason I say that is because I'm about to show you a calculator, and that calculator uses the percentage numbers on spec sheets, not, not, the gravity points numbers, not the um, gravity points per kilo per liter. Once you have those percentage numbers, you can jump on over to chasethecraft.com, click on the calculator tab up the top, and go to the MASH calculators. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, you'll find a brand new calculator, which is gonna help you calculate um, your original gravity from the volume of wort you wanna make and what you're gonna throw in it. At the very top of that calculator, you need to say whether or not you want to work in metric and be a rational sane person. Uh, or if you need to, you can work in freedom units. Go for it, guys. Next, you're gonna put in the total volume that you're aiming for. So remember, team, that is the volume that goes over into your fermenter, uh, assuming that you don't have any dead space in your system and you're not leaving you know, a liter or two behind here or there. If, uh, if you know what I'm talking about, that's cool. You should be able to account for that with this calculator. Just know that it's not um, accounting for that for you. And after that, you need to tell it what your mash efficiency is. So, so the way the extract potential number works is, uh, let's take Gladfield Ale Malt, which is 81%. That is kind of a, a theoretical number, what it could do in a perfect world. Your mash ton and your process is not perfect, and that's not a knock on you, there's really no such thing as a perfect system. <laughs> so it can't convert everything over to sugar. It's gonna do a damn good job of it, but it's not gonna quite get there. Now, if you know what your efficiency is, that's great, put it in. If you have no idea about this, um, don't stress it. If you really want me to show you how to work that out sometime, I can, tell me in the comments down below, I can help you out. Uh, for now, I would suggest taking a stab, a complete guess in the dark, somewhere between 65 and 70% is gonna be a pretty safe spot for you. Really guys, just pick a number, put it in, say 67% <laughs> if you can't make your mind up. And when you put everything else into the calculator, change it to 70% and see the very small, you know, difference that it makes in the gravity. It's really not a big deal. Uh, and in many ways, you don't have any control over it. All right, moving on. Next, it's gonna ask you for your first grain. Now that uh, descriptor you can put in there, you can type in whatever you want. Uh, it doesn't do anything in the calculator. It's simply there to help you remember what you've put in where if you've got a complex grist. Uh, then it's gonna ask you for the weight and of course that efficiency number that we were talking about before, which is gonna be a two digit number. If you have more than one grain, click on that radial button at the bottom and it'll give you another thing. You can put more grains in there. You can add up to five. Now, quick mention to say, if you're into doing equations, you know, by hand or in a spreadsheet, this stuff is not complicated at all, really. And if you want me to do a video uh, breaking down the math of it, I'm more than happy to do it. Uh, I've, I can set it up in a spreadsheet and do like a quick three minute video, like a little bonus extra content video. Uh, if you wanna see that, feel free to say so in the, in the comments down below. Anyway, let's take the numbers that I used for that mash there, throw them into this calculator here, and compare them to the actual gravity. So, as you can see guys, they are pretty damn close. Why are they not exactly the same? Well, um, this is a guess. It's a fairly educated guess, but it is a guess nonetheless. Because that malted corn has a lower extract potential, uh, I pushed up the volume in that mash tun really high. That was 11 kilos of, um, of grist in that mash tun, which was pretty chock-a-block. My hypothesis is because it was so chock-a-block, I just got a slightly lower efficiency than I normally get. That's my guess. So I hope this intuitively makes sense how you can use this calculator. So let's say I wanted to make a 25 liter batch and I wanted it to come out at 1075 and I was gonna use Gladfield's American Ale and, I don't know, Aurora. <laughs> gonna mix those two things together. So I could grab the numbers from both of those products, pop them into the calculator, and tinker with the amounts of grain I'm gonna use for each until it gets me pretty close to 1075. So I hope that this is gonna help you out, guys. I know that uh, 
people have been asking about this stuff for the Great Base Malt Collab. And uh, honestly, I probably should have put this calculator together at the beginning of that. I should have foreseen that people are going to need this. Uh, I apologize, guys, but it's here now and you can use it now. If you have any other questions on this stuff, feel free to drop it in the comments below. And like I said, guys, if you do want to see a video on the actual math that goes on behind this, um, I'm happy to do it for you. I get the feeling though, the people that actually want to know the math are the people that have probably just looked it up themselves and already know how to do it. <laughs> there's no stop, there's no stopping a geek, so all power to you guys. Oh, you want to know what that mash was? Well, guess what guys, if you've been watching the channel, you already know what that is. It's one of the experiments I promised I would do, and uh, you'll see that probably, hopefully next week it'll be ready for a video. Before I get out of here, I need to say a huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you so much, guys. I can't do this stuff without you. You make it all possible, and I appreciate it so much. If you're finding value in these videos and you'd like to help contribute directly to Still It or Chase the Craft, you can go to chasethecraft.com support to find out all the different ways you can help out. One of them, if it's right for you, is Patreon. So there you have it team, I hope that helps you out in your distilling endeavors, I really hope it does. I've had a blast. If you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button down below if you want more content like this and you're not subscribed already. And I'll catch you next time guys. Keep on chasing the craft. See ya.